And I close on an amazing uh, individual, uh, and his name is Michael Bush. And Michael is here. He is the new CEO and owner of Best Place to Work. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret that's going to happen in 2018, because he's another troublemaker extraordinaire, and together we're going to make a lot of trouble. In 2018, the algorithms and the methodology in, in ways that the Googles of the world and so forth end up number one on the list are going to change. Why? Because he's going to change the name. Like we changed Alpha's name, it's going to be best companies to work for all, for all. And that means for all. There's 872 Fortune 1000 boards with no Latina or Latino director. Well, that's going to weigh them down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to work with them again on an exclusive basis. And what we're going to come out for the first time is the best places to work for Latinos, best places to work for Latinos. And corporations in this room have until September 16th to put their numbers in to see how you're doing for Latinos. We're in 160 universities today. The next convention, we we're shooting for 500 universities. And we're going to tell our students, a half a million strong soon, what are the best companies to work for. Michael Bush is an entrepreneur. He's taken a company from nothing to over 150 million. He got bought out. He went to work for that company. It went from a billion to two billion dollars. Like Sylvia, he also has a master's and an MBA from Stanford. And I guarantee you that together, we're going to take Alpha to a new place. Thank you very much. And help me welcome Michael Bush. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. I'm just going to take a few minutes to talk a little about Great Place to Work and about our partnership. Uh, great Place to Work uh, is a business that helps companies create a high trust cu culture. And we do it by having employees get surveyed. So there's a lot of lists around about that say best companies to work for. Our list is the one that you only go for it if you're really serious about creating a high trust culture because the only way to make our list is your employees say you're a great place to work. It doesn't matter what the marketing department says, or the HR department, or the PR department. It's up to the employees, which gives our list tremendous credibility. We actually have some people here tonight who are on our list for the 100 best companies to work for in the United States. I see EY uh, is, is one of the 100 best. And I made sure that I brought you know, because I've got customers here, so you can't leave anybody out. Uh, KPNG is on the list. PwC is on the list. Accenture is on the list. I love them. Deloitte is on the list. And Goldman Sachs is on the list. So these are companies that, that know what it takes uh, to be on the list. And some of the, one of the things that Charlie talked about earlier is the why. You know, why do we do this work? The mission of Great Place to Work is to create a great place to work for all. And our mission statement says that we exist to build a better society. And we do that by helping companies transform their workplaces for all. So that's why we do what we do. We actually think that if somebody has a great work experience, and we know what it means. We've surveyed 100 million people. We survey 15 million people a year. We have offices in 50 countries around the world. So we know a lot about what people think and what they want and what makes a great place to work. And they actually all want the same thing. People want to be treated fairly. People want to be respected. And they want credibility. They want those three things from the people that they work for. That's it. So if you're a leader and you're wondering, what do I have to do to build trust? It's credibility, respect, and fairness. And if you're, if you're wondering what's the most important, it's fairness, by far. 
Eight out of 10 people who leave a job don't leave the company, they leave the manager. That's what the data said. It's, it's not debatable, it's not disputable. It's about the manager, it's about the leader. That person can create an environment where someone feels like they can be their true self. And when they're their true self, they're bringing their full potential to work, which means the business is getting a lower cost structure because they're getting more productivity out of that person, higher profit, and it's just a good thing to do. So we believe culture actually leads to things like profit and cash, and those are very, very valu valuable things. We also believe when somebody's working at a place that's a great place to work, it doesn't feel like work. You know people who get up in the shower and they're in the shower thinking about work? Don't you want those people working for you? That's what high trust people do. You know, when they're really engaged, they're thinking about it all the time. And we know that people who have that kind of experience at work go home, they're better at home, and they're better in their communities. That's where our missions connect between Great Place to Work for All and your great organization. We both believe we can improve the world and, and certainly this country. And I think in terms of Great Place to Work for All, in my adult life, there hasn't been a time where I felt we needed to transform society like right now. In my adult life, I haven't seen another time quite like this, where if you look at the things that we score, it's the things that we need from our leaders, respect, credibility, and fairness. These things not only work at work, they also work in society. So it's our hope that working together, you'll want to get on the list, apply for it, it gets your company just like the great companies. The reason these people cheer is they know what it takes to be on the list and they're proud to be on the list. The reason people want to be on the list is it's a great recruiting tool because people want to work at a great place to work. And they want to work at a place where the people who work there say it's a great place to work. So it's an awesome recruiting tool and it's a great retention tool as well. So we feel that working together, we can address the for all. How do we get to the for all? I looked at 20 years of data, 100,000 companies, 100 million employees served, and found that you could be a great place to work for some and a terrible place to work for others. And it didn't take a genius to know that's not really a great place to work. So the data made it clear that something needed to change. So we worked with our media partner at Fortune and said, we think it's time. And they said, we think it's time as well. So not only do we score the relationships that people have with each other, fairness, pride, camaraderie, and those kinds of things, we score innovation, we score financial sustainability, and we score disparity starting in 2018. So we're gonna look at the difference in work experience between men and women. You think that's a good thing to do? Okay. We look at the difference between work experience between salaried and non-salaried employees. Age groups. North America, South America. South America versus Latin America, et cetera, to see if there's a difference. And for companies that are able to create a culture that's a great place to work for all, which means they'll have less disparity, they're gonna be higher on the list. So that's a change. We think it's the right time. We think it's important for everybody in this room. We think it's important for everybody. There's no losers in this. Uh, we certainly think it's important for our country, but we're gonna use this methodology uh, throughout the world. So I'll just wrap up in saying that just using a metaphor, especially at this time in our country, metaphorically and practically speaking, we all came to this great country on different ships. But we're on the same boat now. We need to accept it, realize it, and create a great place to work for all. Thanks very much. <laughs>